Okay, I'm honestly a little bit embarrassed to show you all this, but it's time to get this pool ready to start swimming in again. Now, as you can see, I covered the pool and I did a terrible job of it. The cover that came with the pool, I, I don't know, it didn't really fit or something. And it had this cable on the edge and we had to, here, I'll show you in a second. We had to bungee it down and, and just fake the whole thing. And then we put one of those big uh, like bubbles in the middle so that it would, the water would hopefully not build up in there. But as you can see, it's totally full of water. So step one is I just gotta drain this water out of here. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'm gonna keep on posting updates of what I do with this pool. So it'd be kind of fun to follow along with that, right? And you might like my bamboo grove and you might like my rock hunting videos and things like that too. So, you know, you could subscribe. So as you can see, I did not succeed in keeping the water out of there at all. And, and my big uh, balloon that I put in there that's supposed to be in the middle uh, floated off to the side and didn't do any good at all. So uh, I think next year that has to kind of be tied in place. And as you can see, like, I just, I just, kind of faked the whole thing because I could not get this thing on well and so I mean it's embarrassing to look at uh, now to show you this but I used that little cable that came with the swimming pool kit and at the end of this summer I have got to do something different right you can see it's not good there a little way for water to get in look at this horrible job we did I mean bungee cords just trying to get it to stay on and then there's the, the balloon I got that's supposed to be out in the middle I put down that rag there just to keep that skinny little metal cable from digging into the pool. Bungees and some like pool ties there. And I mean, it's just ridiculous how I did this. At least this side of the pool stayed covered, right? Learn from my mistakes. I need a better way to cover this pool. So I'm gonna have to research a little better and do a better job. And of course, I will make a new video about that. Calvin, no, bad dog. Calvin, bad dog. Don't do that. Calvin, no. Okay, so I have about a 20 foot length of hose and I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way which is to suck on this, and get it, get the siphoning started. Don't mock me. There we go, I got it. I'm not gonna let this drain and who knows how long it's gonna take. Okay. Calvin, no, bad dog. Okay, this has been draining for about 24 hours now and it's starting to get down there. You can actually see the bottom. Okay, so I've drained most of the water out of this off the cover here, but I don't quite have it all yet. So my dad had this idea of bringing his shop back over. I don't think this will take too long, I hope. This is working slowly but surely. I still wanna get a little bit more out so that I don't dump any of that crap into the pool when I take this cover off. So I'm gonna start undoing all the funky stuff we did over here. This little metal cable that came with the pool kit and this cover, and this little winch. I mean, this is all garbage. I will never cover my pool like this again, I promise you. So my dad and I are now gonna try to grab this tarp, take it off the edge the other way, and hopefully no water will leak out into the pool. We got most of the water out, but there's still, you know, a little bit of gunk left in there. So let's see how this goes. Tight, nice and tight. Got it. it. Shouldn't be that hard. Next year, I promise it won't be. Okay, so we are going to put the pump back outside. You should always store your pump indoors over the winter because you don't want water freezing inside those pumps. So take them off, put them inside. That's the best route to go. So this is, should be a pretty easy job here. Just a little basket here, throw that in there. Like so, line this up with the intake there. And then make sure your seal's still in good shape, right? Okay. Last year we had some leaks and I used a lots of plumber's tape to alleviate some of those leaks. So you're gonna see me putting on a bunch of plumber's tape on everything. Apparently you have to put plumber's tape on a certain way and I didn't know that. My dad says that's enough. So I went around maybe two or three times. Okay, so believe it or not, I put the plumber's tape on backwards. My dad was right, I should have listened the first time. And it buggered all up when we tried to put it on. So I'm gonna put it on 
the opposite direction. So now when we twist it this way, the tape will go with it and it won't get all buggered up. Calvin, no. We are so slow, so slow. I mean, me especially. Last year we had a ton of leakage here and here and you can see it. And, and the only way I was able to alleviate the problem was by loading these with tons of plumber's tape, thereby making the connections a little bit tighter. So believe it or not, that worked. So that's what I'm gonna do again. See how loose this is, Dad? Well, it is kind of odd. What do you put the wrong end in? Is that tighter? It's tighter to me. It looks tighter and... It is tighter. It is tighter. That was a leak right there. There's a possibility I may have put these hoses on backwards last year, which is why they're leaking, because it looks like the ends are just slightly different sizes. This one's a little bigger. It fits right over that, no problem. The other one is a lot tighter, so... Last thing for today is just starting to fill this thing up and then do a water test. Uh, I do recommend testing your own water, getting a nice test kit and testing your own water. Um, but if you have a pool store that you really trust and, and they do a good job on their tests, I, I do trust my pool store. They're, they're, they're Haven Pool Spa and Hearth, I think is the name. And uh, their water test seems to be pretty accurate. When I compare it to my test results, it's always very, very close. So uh, they, you know, of course they try to sell me stuff because they're a pool store, that's what they do. Last step of the day, put the solar cover on. Okay, it's important before you turn your pump on to make sure it's full of water. I looked in here and there's still no water in there. Okay, so this has been slowly filling with water. It's almost to the top. I'm going to put the cap back on now and I'm going to uh, turn this thing on because both these hoses are now full of water and unfortunately that one on the right is leaking a little bit. Doggone it. I changed the sand filter to be on filter. See, right there, which is where it should be. Tightened up. There we go. Okay, so now that I have the lid on and I know this entire system is full of water, I should be able to turn the pump on. However, I'm going to let the pool get a little bit more full because I want the water to be well above this intake here. I know. Hey. This video is going to sound like a bunch of whining. It's recording all this. Going. Here's my advice. Don't do this before dinner because then it'll make your whole entire family mad. Ah, uh, you'll be fine. Keep going. Normally I work a little harder to wind this up straight, but uh, obviously I wasn't doing it. Okay, there's some noise in the background. I don't really care. I just got off work. I'm gonna crank this cover off. I'm gonna see if this pump, I'm gonna, I got the pump all primed, it's full of water. I'm gonna turn it on today and see if it works. Let's just get to it. All right, let's see what happens here. This is on filter here. And so I'm gonna to try to turn this pump on. We'll see what happens. You got a little air bubbles blowing out there, but that's good. You want those air bubbles to blow out. And now I don't see any more, well, a little bit more air in there. Just gotta be some air in, in all the sand there in the filter. We can see that that is full of water, which is great. That's where it's supposed to be. Okay, nothing is spraying out of those like crazy. So that's good. They're not leaking too bad. This one doesn't look like it's leaking at all, so that's great. This one has a little bit of a drip coming down here, so not a huge deal. What I'll do is at some point I'll put a cap on the inside and I'll, like a plate or something, I'll put it right against there. The suction will hold it in place. I'll unscrew this, take this off, unscrew this, and just put more plumber's tape right here. Okay, so the pressure on this thing is way too high. It's showing like 35, 40 PSI. That's way too high. It should be down around 10 or so. I want to get a new gauge because right now there's no pressure in this sand filter at all and it says it's at 31 psi already and that's not possible. So I'm going to go buy a new gauge. They're really cheap and my pool store has them in stock. I'm also going to get a water test at my pool store so that's what I'm up to next. So one thing I did today was I went to the pool store and got a water test. You can see I'm a little bit low on chlorine. Oh well, very low. A little bit low on cyanuric acid little on my pH. And then on the back here are all these things they recommend you buy. And I recommend that if you trust your pool store, go ahead and use them and get test results. But I also recommend that you learn how to test your water yourself. There's a test kit that I use. I have a link in the description of this video. 
there's also a pool forum that I'm a part of and they will teach you how to use the, the test kit. And they will tell you never, in the forum they say never use your pool store. But you know what, it's good to use your pool store, get the results, don't always take all the recommendations on all the things to buy because they might try to sell you some stuff. Just take their results and compare them with your own and see if they're accurate. And uh, for, for the most part, Haven Pool Spa and Hearth, my pool store, they've been really accurate and they're, they're really good to me. They don't try to oversell me on stuff, but anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to replace this, what do you call it, a pressure gauge because it says it's 30 PSI and it's not. It should say zero PSI like this one does, right? When there's no pressure, it should say zero. So let's go ahead and take this off. This, they just screw right off, at least this one does. Water's probably gonna come out, that's okay. Yep, there's some water coming out. I'll screw this one right in. And there we go. And look at that, it says zero, right? That's what it should say, zero. All done, it's that easy to replace those. All right, looks like the PSI is right about where it should be, just about 10. So that's perfect, everything is looking really good so far. And if you don't have one of these nets, you really should have one of these nets, right? Because you gotta get stuff sometimes. Or get stuff off the top of the water like bumblebees and leaves and such. I highly recommend getting something to cover your connection and waterproof your connection like this little box here, whatever you call these things. But it covers over your, uh, your electrical connections so they don't get wet, which is pretty important around a pool. Also, be sure you have a heavy duty extension cable that's rated for outdoor use. That's important. Also be sure your outlet is GFCI protected because you're working around water. Uh, you can buy a portable GFCI protection unit and I'll put a link to one of those in the description. But a lot of outdoor plugs are already um, GFCI protected. Okay, so tonight I'm going to throw my robot in the pool and I'm gonna give this thing a thorough clean. Come on buddy, don't fail me. So once that sinks to the bottom, I'll, I will turn on the power supply and we will see if uh, everything is copacetic. It should be. Powering on here. There it goes. Look at that. Yippee. Okay, this will run for a couple hours. It should clean off all the junk that's at the bottom of the pool and on the sides of the pool. And, uh, and then tomorrow, we will move on to the next phase, which is adding the proper chemicals. By the way, this is the Active 20. I tried three different robots, and this was the best deal by far. It's got the anti-tangle cable. It works really well on this pool. Uh, it goes up the sides, cleans the water line, cleans the bottom. It's an exceptional little machine. A little bit expensive, but uh, I will have a link for one of these in the description of this video. So as you can see, the robot did a pretty good job of cleaning out the pool. There's not much left in there. So should you use liquid chlorine or should you use stabilized pucks? Well, stabilized pucks have, are, are bound together with stabilizer or cyanuric acid. Uh, you don't want your cyanuric acid to get too high on your pool because the more cyanuric acid you have, the more chlorine you need for it to be effective. So you want to keep your cyanuric acid levels around 25 or 30, that'd be perfect. And then once they get there, then switch over to liquid chlorine. So I'm going to start the season with the, the, the pucks and build up the cyanuric acid levels in my pool because right now they're only like four and so i needed to get up to like 25 or 30 and this is the perfect way to build those uh, levels up but if you use pucks all summer even though they're a lot easier to to deal with than liquid chlorine your cyanuric acid levels will get so high that you'll need like four times as much chlorine to be effective and what you don't want to be swimming in more chlorine you want to be swimming in less chlorine also when your cyanuric acid levels get too high Chlorine actually becomes ineffective at, at, at some point. So I'm going to link to a chart in the TFP forums in, in the description of this video. It'll show you like if your cyanuric acid level is 30, how much chlorine you need to be effective. Or if your cyanuric acid level is 80, how much chlorine you need for it to be effective. So that's a very useful chart. Now, liquid chlorine is super expensive in the pool stores. Like I, I think I went to the pool store the other day and I think they said it was 60 bucks for four gallons. I bought 10 gallons of this for like eight bucks at Lowe's on a clearance. If you do buy bleach, it's about half the strength of the pool store's liquid chlorine. So keep that in mind, you'll have to use more of this. But it's so much cheaper. However, 
The downside of using liquid chlorine is that it dissipates out of your pool quickly, so you ha constantly have to be adding it to keep your chlorine levels up. It's not like these pucks, you just throw them in the pool and leave them for a week or two, right? Which, and that's easy, but you just don't want those cyanuric acid levels getting too high. Make sure the bleach you get, though, has no scents or fillers or anything like that. Just, just plain old bleach. That's all you want. Okay, so it's raining outside, and I don't want to get water into my chlorine bucket here. That's not a good idea, folks. So, uh... Open it here under cover, if I can. And I think I'll start out with uh, maybe four pucks. I would use gloves. I wouldn't touch this stuff. Two, three, four pucks maybe. And then that'll take a while to build up in the pool. But I'm also going to add, I think I'll add the rest of this. There's about two thirds of this gallon in there. And um, that'll get the chlorine levels up really quickly. And then I'll test it later on um, and see what my levels are at. But right now I have to experiment a little, uh, a little bit to see. Um, you know, I want my chlorine to be about four or five right now. I think, I think four or five parts per million is the right way to say it. But anyway, I'm just going to say four or five um, with the cyanuric acid levels that I have right now, which are super low, right? So I'm going to go throw this in the pool and I'm going to dump this in the pool, nice and slowly, like a pencil width, and then uh, right above the. Uh, the uh, return so that it just kind of spreads out into the pool and of course the weather is not cooperating but uh, welcome to the Northwest here I'm gonna dump these in and then I'm gonna dump in my liquid chlorine the return is right there I'm gonna dump it right there don't let it splash on you okay that's about half a gallon I think I'm gonna stop there because I don't remember exactly how much to add but regular testing is useful okay so let's go ahead and do a basic chlorine and pH test to see if we've made any progress in this pool here now my guess is that there's gonna be like no chlorine in here because there's no very little cyanuric acid in the water so yeah it's registering pretty much no chlorine we're gonna need to add more pucks because we just got to get the uh, stabilizer levels up in the pool. So let's look at the pH though. Now, this is just a very basic kit that comes with, you know, most pools and such. Uh, if you're really going to get a testing kit, go for the one I have in the description. It's a full featured kit, costs about a hundred bucks. Okay, so the pH, a little low, it's about 6.8, close to 7.7. 7. Um, and the chlorine is maybe about 0.5. So definitely got to add some more pucks. So because the chlorine levels are so low, I'm going to throw a few more pucks in there in hopes to bring the chlorine levels up and to also bring the stabilizer level up in the pool. However, I may need to buy some additional stabilizer uh, to add to the pool to get those levels up a little bit quicker. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the chlorine levels. It's been a couple days since I added those six pucks and the liquid chlorine. So let's do five drips of this stuff in here. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty yellow. I can see that the chlorine levels are already a little bit too high, but that's okay. I mean, we're not swimming in the pool right now. Um, and I'd rather have the chlorine levels too high than too low at this point. So let's go ahead and test the pH. One, two, three, four, five, okay. I'm also gonna go into my pool store today and get my cyanuric acid levels tested, uh, my stabilizer levels. As you can see, here, the chlorine levels are a little bit high, probably about 10 parts per million, maybe even a little higher, which is pretty high. That's more like public, public swimming pool uh, levels. And then the pH is still about 6.8, so a little bit low. So we gotta bring the pH up a little bit, and um, the chlorine levels should be a little bit lower than that once we start swimming. I'd say maybe three to five parts per million um, for good chlorine levels. So if you look out there in the center of the pool, you will see that the robot can't pick up the fine silt. As the pool filter goes, that stuff just kind of collects in the middle. So I have a, uh, a vacuum that actually connects to the pump and I'm gonna hook that up right now and I'm gonna vacuum that, st that stuff out of here. Okay, so for my vacuuming today, I'm gonna use this. This is my, my net here. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna put this on the end here. Perfect, okay. Then I'm going to take this hose, like so, 
and then I'm going to attach the other end here to my pump. Okay, so this is gonna go in my pool. This little guy here, this will go in here like this. And then this will go into my skimmer. But one thing you wanna make sure of is that you fill this hose with water before you start. You have to have water going through the pump. If you have a bunch of air, that's not good. Take this and put it on the, uh, on the pool return right down here, and it'll just, it'll just fill it up with water. Watch this. You start, see all the air coming out? There we go. Okay, so that hose should be totally full of water now. So now we're gonna power the pump off. We'll put this on the end here like we did before. That feels like a decent fit there. So now, but that's all hooked up and this is full of water, we're set to go. So one other good thing to do is to use one of these uh, backwash hoses here. It's really easy, you just put a hose clamp on it and then and th this gets the water away from all your, you know, all your stuff, your electrical and your, and your pump and everything else. It just allows you to put the water where you want it instead of making a big mess right by your pool. So just put the hose clamp on like so don't put it too tight you'll crack your plastic there and then just run this line out into your yard or wherever you want to um, run your water okay now that your pump is set to backwash and your hose is full of water and all your stuff is connected you can turn on your pump and you can start vacuuming i didn't i didn't mean backwash i mean bypass to waste and then go ahead and turn your pump on Peeling water out, and then it's time to vacuum. If you go too fast, you can stir stuff up, and then it won't vacuum it. So go nice and slow. And this is the best way to get that fine silt out of your pool. Um, go ahead and power the pump off. Switch this back to filter. Go ahead and take this off. Let's connect the hose here and put the skimmer back in. Go ahead and power the pump back on. And check your, oh goodness, it's got all soaking wet inside. Still working, thank goodness. This is actually brand new, so I'm not sure why this is wet inside. I'm gonna have to take that back. It's got a bunch of water in there, but you can see the pressure is still where it's supposed to be. It's right about 11 or 12. Okay, so I got my pool test results, and it looks like my pH is just a little low. It's 7. should be about 7.2, but that's pretty close. Total alkalinity is okay, a little bit low, and my phosphates are a little high. They, what the guy at the pool store said is this is because of leaves and, and pollen and such in my pool, uh, and also my calcium hardness is low. So, but actually this is pretty good. This looks pretty close to what it should be. And, and they said my chlorine is a little bit high, but I, you know, based on my home test, it looked a lot higher than that. So that's a question mark there, but my pool is just about ready to go. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention the cyanuric acid, which I've been talking a lot about in this video. It's uh, five now, I think it was four before. So it's gone up just a tiny little bit. And as those pucks dissolve, that'll continue to go up. So I think I'm just gonna continue to use the pucks until that is up to around 30 or so and then i'm going to switch over to liquid chlorine for the rest of the summer taking a look in there and it looks pretty good there's a little bit of junk in there not much a little bit of silt in the middle still but uh, it's hard to get everything completely out it looks amazingly good i think it's about ready for us to jump in here and give it a swim how is it okay the inaugural swim Oh, I was flashing. That didn't work. Oh, that didn't work.